This next portion of the presentation provides some important points about scheduling your exam and taking your exam, as well as information as to what to expect after the exam. To apply to take the exam, first be sure to download or print a copy of the RAC Candidate Guide from RAPS.org. The Candidate Guide provides the most updated information about the RAC exam application process, fees, testing and scoring information. It also contains the content outlines we discussed previously. You may submit your application for the exam online, by fax, or by mail and you'll be notified by email that your application has been received. Once your RAC exam application is approved, you'll receive notification from the exam administration company, that's CASEL Worldwide, with instructions for scheduling your testing appointment. They'll send you a web link, a username, and a password that will give you access to exam scheduling information. When you schedule your exam, be sure to note the date, the time, and location, and to save or print the email from CASEL Worldwide so you have access to this information if you need it to access it again. Keep in mind that exam time slots may become full, so it's good not to delay scheduling your exam appointment. You must make your exam appointment at least four days prior to the desired testing date and realize that it may be not be possible to accommodate appointment requests that are made late in the testing window. It's important to note that you'll not receive any reminders of your exam appointment. It's up to you to remember. If you miss your appointment, you will not be able to reschedule your exam appointment, but you'll be recorded as a no-show. Any changes to your appointment are to be made through Castle Worldwide and not through the RAPS office. There is a fee associated with changing your appointment, and you will not be able to change your appointment less than four days before your scheduled exam date. If an emergency situation should arise, such as a personal medical emergency or a death in your immediate family, and you cannot keep your exam appointment, you may request to transfer to the ne next testing window Please refer to the Canada Guide for guidelines in such emergency situations. Now we're going to talk about getting yourself ready for exam day. First, be well rested. Don't stay up all night studying. If you're rested, you're more likely to be relaxed and will perform better. Don't go to the exam on an empty stomach. Eat healthy foods that will sustain you through the two-hour testing period. Allow yourself plenty of time to get to the examination site. It's a good idea to plan on arriving at least 30 minutes prior to your appointment. When you arrive, you'll be asked to show a photo ID. That photo ID must match the name you provided on your RAC exam application. Please contact the RAC program staff if there are any changes or if you have questions about what kinds of ID requirements there are. Don't wait until test day to do so if you don't have appropriate identification. And if you come without the correct ID, you'll not be permitted to take the test. You will not be allowed to bring any materials such as a computer, mobile phone, book, notes, coats or sweaters into the testing room. If you have these materials, they will be stored for you. You can refer to the Candidate Guide and CASEL's website for a complete list of prohibited items. Note also that no food or drink will be allowed in the examination room. And if you need to use the bathroom during the exam, you're using time that could be spent on addressing the exam itself. After your appointment and ID are confirmed, you'll be seated in a testing room or cubicle. You'll be given a white board and a marker or a single sheet of paper and a pencil on which you can write notes or make notations for yourself while taking the exam. These items will be collected from you after the exam. This next screen gives you an example of how questions appear on the screen. 
The question with its corresponding number is shown along with the possible answers. To select a response, you would simply move the mouse to the corresponding circle and click. Your selection will appear as a black dot in the circle. If you want to change your response, simply click on another circle. You'll note at the top of the screen there are a number of tools that will allow you to advance to the next question, to return to a question, or to flag a question for later review. This flag feature allows you to quickly return to those questions that remain to be answered or that you may want to reconsider once you've finished the exam. The best tool for success on the RAC exam is being prepared. Here are a few additional tips that may assist you in taking the exam. First, realize that exam questions are not presented in any predetermined order. Don't be thrown, for example, if the first question relates to the post-marketing approval area. Be sure to read the entire question. Be sure you clearly understand what is being asked. It's a good idea to read the question, read it again, and then read it a third time. Notice any words that are capitalized, such as least, most, first. These will give you clues about what the question is asking. Many questions on the RAC exam may refer to a specific type of product, such as a medical device or pharmaceutical. In some cases, the question is asking for regulations specific to that product type. However, a number of other questions <clears throat> are asking you questions about good regulatory process and are not necessarily product specific. So when you read a question, be sure you understand what the question is really asking. There's a tendency to become more anxious when answering questions that appear to be relative to products outside your current job function. But again, think about applying your general regulatory knowledge. If the question asks for a logical sequence, for example, what you should do first, think about the sequence in which that work or information occurs in product development and the regulatory process. If the question asks you to select the best action, read the alternatives carefully. Think about which action or information will apply most often. If a question asks for an exception, something that would not be used or would be least likely to be used, carefully re review the responses and think about what action is typically taken. You will often find one answer that does not fit into that step in the regulatory process. Avoid overanalyzing the responses. For example, don't read into the question or answer options that are provided. If after reading a question you find yourself thinking, yes, but, or what if, then likely you're trying to read into that question, and that's not a good idea. Try to answer the questions based on the information you have been given. For many items, it'll be easy for you to respond. For some items, you will select the answer that seems to be the best fit, but you may want to review your response later on. If you can't decide on an answer, leave it blank or select the answer you think is best, and then flag it for review. You may find it helpful to make a note on the whiteboard or the piece of paper about the, what the particular question is asking and the item number. Realize, too, that as you proceed with the examination, other questions and responses may help you clarify your thinking on a prior question. Don't look for answer patterns. The testing approach used for the RAC exam ensures that questions and correct responses do not fall into patterns. And contrary to some myths, C will not be the most frequent answer. Don't use the length of a response as a clue. The longer answer is not always the correct one, and the RAC exam committees work hard to balance the length of response options. Continuing on, if you're not sure about an answer, here are a few steps that you can take. First, see whether you can eliminate any answers you know to be incorrect. For example, if the question relates to a preclinical step in product development, 
And one possible answer addresses a post-marketing reporting requirement, you can eliminate that option from consideration. If there are two options that appear opposite, usually one of them can be eliminated. And use your best reasoning to identify the one that does not fit. If you still can't decide on an answer, flag the question, move on, and come back to it later. Don't panic. You can also use educated guesses. On any exam, you will be confronted with questions that seem totally or partially unfamiliar. You may also be faced with many unanswered questions and limited time to complete the exam. In either case, your best option is to guess as you will not lose points for a wrong answer. So it's better not to leave a question, a question unanswered. Try to make an informed guess, that is, try to eliminate the options that do not fit and then select the best of the remaining options. Budget your time and don't rush. Candidates usually comment that they have sufficient time to answer all questions and then to go back and review their responses. Remember to move around in your seat periodically to make sure that you're sitting comfortably. Finally, don't worry if others finish before you. There's nothing gained by being the first to finish, and it's important to realize that others around you may also be taking a different exam. What do we do about anxiety? Well, expect some anxiety. It's a reminder to you that you want to do your best and it keeps you energized. Just keep your anxiety manageable. Relax, take slow deep breaths, pause, don't panic. Remember you can return to an unanswered question or flag a question for later review if you want to go back and recheck your answer. If you're stuck on a question, move on to the next question and stay on task. Avoid negative thoughts like, I didn't study enough, I knew I should have read that chapter again. That doesn't help and it just creates a distraction. Use positive reinforcement. Acknowledge all the work that you've done to get to this point on exam day and that you are doing your best. And realize that managing anxiety can be a tool for your success. After the exam, it's natural to wonder how you did and to analyze your performance. You'll be thinking about those tricky questions, things that were unfamiliar to you, or that you had more questions in one particular product area than another. It's best to put these thoughts aside and relax. You can expect to receive an email with your pass or fail results within four to six weeks of the close of the testing window. Note that this is not four to six weeks of your specific testing date. In the weeks following, you'll receive a letter with your specific score information. The RAC exams are not scored at the testing site. They are scored and analyzed by the testing contractor and then by the exam committee. After all candidates are notified, the names of those who passed the exam are posted on the RAP's website as well as in the Regulatory Focus magazine. There is no listing of individuals who do not pass the exam. The passing score for the RAC exams is determined by specific psychometric analysis. It is a criterion reference approach, which means that each candidate's performance is compared to specific criteria and not to the performance of other candidates. More information about the scoring of the exam is available on the RAC page on the RAP website and in the candidate guide. Like most professional certification examinations, the RAC exams are challenging and not everyone will pass. If you don't pass, you're encouraged to continue your studies and to consider taking the exam again in the near future.